Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to systematically determine what is the ultimate survivalist physique and body type. Let's get into it. Alright, so typically speaking, the best physique is the one that's most adapted to the environment that you might find yourself in. So all of the body types that I'm going to talk about today, they can have skill sets in the martial arts or other practices, motor skills, or what we call dexterities. But we're not taking those into account today because it doesn't really matter what your body type is, you can still be a martial arts expert or have motor skill sets. Now certain body types that I discussed today may be more compatible with said skill sets. However, that's a topic unto itself and would just make this a very long-winded discussion, so I'm not going to get into that. Generally speaking, if you want to be good at lifting weights, you lift weights. If you want to be good at running, you run. Now there may be some generalized effects. For example, lifting weights may make you functionally stronger at another task, but nothing trains a motor pattern like doing the specific activity that you want to train for. So if you're training to run and gun, then the best training you can possibly have is running and gunning. For example, a person may be able to bench press 315 for 10 reps because they have mastered that motor pattern. And indeed, they may have achieved a certain level of functional strength as a result of this. But the role of motor pattern is often very underestimated. Just because you can bench 315 doesn't mean that you're going to be the best hay baler on the farm and vice versa. Mind-muscle connection is everything. So there's a reason why different bears or different animals are adapted to different regions of the planet and there's a, just a variety of different types of bears depending on the regions that they find themselves in. Now the spectrum of bears ranges from very small tree-dwelling creatures to very large predatorial creatures. And even human beings have different body types based on the geography and climate of the regions that we inhabit. So bigger and stronger is not always better. It really depends on the environment and conditions one finds themselves in. In some instances, being big and strong can actually be counterproductive to survival because in the end, a larger body needs more to survive. If you look at certain groups around the world, Certain countries have very short people, other countries have very tall people. Everybody's adapted to their climate for a specific reason. So there's six types of body composition which are a spin-off of the ectomesoendomorphic distinction. Now there's a few components of fitness that I did not include in this typology, and those are balance, coordination, reaction time, and various subtypes of strength and endurance, just so to make it simplified. Now I'm going to be ranking these six different body types on the basis of ten dimensions which are as follows. Power, strength, agility, speed, endurance, muscle mass, flexibility, energy storage capacity which is basically fat or body fat percentage, the gray man factor which is going to be your ability to blend in, and the intimidation factor, your ability to psychologically intimidate your opponents. Now all of these traits are going to be ranked on a scale of 1 to 10, so 10 traits on a scale of 1 to 10, there is the potential to have a score of 100. However, having a score of 100 is pretty much physically impossible because some of these traits are going to counterbalance one another. It's physically impossible to have the largest energy stores, that is body fat percentage, and be the fastest runner. Another important thing to note is that the more muscle a person has, the more energy and protein is required to maintain that muscle. And it's also important to note that muscle in itself provides less energy than fat. So when your body does inevitably start to break down muscle tissue in order to get energy to survive, it's only cannibalizing four calories per gram of protein that you have in your body in contrast to nine calories per gram of protein which is metabolized from your fat stores. So fat is a far more efficient energy carrying source, although fat does not have the capability to perform work. So the first body type I want to talk about is most akin to the ectomorph, and I'm going to call it the untrained ectomorph, and basically it's the skinny weakling type person who is skinny by nature and also doesn't have a lot of muscle. I basically deliberated on my own why they have each of these scores, so very low power, very low strength, they do have relatively high speed in spite of their lack of muscle mass. They probably have the highest flexibility of all of the body types that I'm going to talk about due to their lack of muscle mass and just general wiry nature. 
and they also score very high on the gray man factor and this is due to their ability to blend in and seem relatively harmless to people who may be in opposition to them. So I believe that this body type is best suited to a nomadic scenario where few preps are on hand but there are low security risks because with their lack of muscle mass and their meek nature they're not going to be able to defend themselves in a lot of ways but they're also not going to be well suited to being stationary they're going to have to be out and mobile collecting resources in order to survive now the next body type is the trained ectomorph so it's this same guy only he's trained he's fit and basically this is your endurance athlete they score very high as you can see here on the endurance measure with a 10 they're probably going to have the most endurance be able to run the farthest have the greatest cardiovascular capability of all of the six groups of people that i'm going to talk about they also have a relatively high gray man factor because typically these people don't have a lot of muscle mass they're going to score very low in the muscle mass they still have more muscle than the untrained ectomorph but they're going to blend in quite well they're not going to have a huge intimidation factor because people are going to perceive them as being small and even if you are very ripped uh, depending on the clothes that you're wearing you could actually seem quite skinny and harmless which is why a lot of bodybuilders when they are fully dressed don't look like bodybuilders they just look like skinny people because unfortunately having such a low body fat percentage brings down the intimidation factor now these people are going to be best suited to a nomadic scenario with few preps on hand that and high security risks. So they're going to be perhaps more better suited to defending themselves in these different altercations. They're going to be able to run faster. They're going to be able to run longer. They're just going to be more physically capable in general. Now the next category is the untrained mesomorph. Basically, they're the person of average build. They're pretty much moderate across the board. You know, they're somewhat intimidating, but not really. They kind of blend in. They have a decent amount of fat stores on their body, so they're going to be able to survive for a decent amount of time. Moderate flexibility, moderate speed, pretty much everything in this category is across the board. So these people are going to be best suited to a nomadic slash sedentary scenario with moderate preps on hand and moderate security risks so basically middle of the road everything is what this body type is going to be suited to so this might be a guy who without even working out might have a bit of muscle maybe a guy of relatively larger stature than the skinny weakling but untrained of course so you know if they were to train they become probably very muscular which is the whole idea with the mesomorph is that they have the capability to be very muscular as in the next category I'm going to discuss but if you're untrained then you're probably going to blend in more so that's going to bring up the gray man factor so really this is a very well-rounded place to be an ideal body type for a post-collapse environment so the next category is going to be the trained mesomorph or the basically the last category the guy who is middle of the road who decides to take up athletic training so they're going to have relatively high power strength they're going to have speed uh, these are going to be your short distance runner types they're going to have exceptional agility they're going to have a lot of endurance not as much of course as the marathon runner and they're going to have exceptionally high muscle mass so there is going to be a huge intimidation factor with the trained mesomorph and there's not going to be much of a gray man factor because depending on how these people are dressed they're going to stand out like sore thumbs now these people are going to be best suited to the nomadic sedentary scenarios so somewhere in between nomadic and sedentary perhaps that means a scenario where you're you have a base camp but you have to routinely go out and scavenge for things uh, and you may have moderate preps on hand but you're going to have high security risk so contrary to the untrained mesomorph the trained mesomorph is going to be more suited to dealing with those security risks just due to their increased fitness capabilities now the next category is the trained endomorph so basically an endomorph is a person who has a very slow metabolism so they bulk up very quickly and this body type in sports anyways is commonly associated with the strongman or powerlifter body type basically they're going to have incredible power they're going to have a lot of strength they're going to have low agility, low endurance, low speed. They're going to have a lot of muscle mass. In a lot of cases, powerlifters actually have more muscle mass than a bodybuilder. 
but the bodybuilder is far more lean and ripped, whereas the powerlifter is typically cloaked in layers of fat because they're eating more because their goal is to get stronger, not leaner and have a slender physique. They're going to have a huge intimidation factor. I would guess that they're probably more intimidating than the athletic mesomorph just because most people who don't exercise associate size with strength and fitness capability whereas anybody who does fitness and training knows that that's entirely not true in fact the more weight that you have to carry the slower you're gonna be yes you may have a bit more weight behind your body but uh, there's a lot of drawbacks to carrying around all that extra weight that's not performing any actual function like lead mass does so these people are going to be best suited to a sedentary bug-in scenario with lots of preps on hand but high security risks. So they're gonna have that ability to be intimidating. They're gonna be the least gray band you could possibly imagine. They're gonna stand out like a sore thumb, but they're gonna have high built-in energy stores because they have a high body fat percentage. They're gonna have a lot of power, a lot of strength, and maybe even a little bit of agility. You know, if you ever remember uh, WWF Bam Bam Bigelow, you know, he used to do cartwheels all around the wrestling ring there. So just because you're big and chunky doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be a little agile at the same time, but you're gonna need some muscle and some motor conditioning for that kind of thing too. And last but not least, the popular one in North America is the untrained endomorph. So basically, these people are gonna have the highest amount of energy stores. So this is a person who is overweight and doesn't train at all. They're gonna have moderate power and moderate strength. They're probably gonna be stronger than the skinny weakling. In fact, they most likely will be because carrying around all of that fat all day actually does build muscle. It's like carrying around weights all day. So people who are fat are actually naturally quite strong. When they do start training in the gym, they realize this. So they're gonna score the highest on energy stores and they have moderate muscle mass. Now they're gonna be best suited to a bug-in scenario with a lot of preps on hand to sustain them, but low security risk because they don't have that muscle and that power and that big intimidation factor that the trained endomorph might have. So there's a few environmental factors to consider. So there's sedentary versus mobile. So if you're sedentary, typically the bigger you are, the better. To be mobile, you have to be small, you have to be nimble and agile and fast. So high resources in the environment versus low resources in the environment. So if there's a lot of resources in the environment, let's say you have to hunt or fish or something, you need to be quite mobile in doing that. Especially, you know, if there's low resources, you even need to be probably more mobile. So I'm guessing that the lower the resources, the smaller you'd have to be, the more beneficial would be smaller to collect those resources. However, the smaller you are, obviously the less built-in fat stores you have on hand. So two things to consider there. Another division is high resources on hand versus low resources on hand. So how many resources do you have at your disposal? If you have a lot of resources at your disposal, you're not gonna have to leave, so you're gonna be more capable of just maintaining that sedentary lifestyle whereas if you don't have a lot on hand you're gonna have to go out and collect resources and that might require a more slender capable physique high population density versus low population density high crime rate versus low crime rate so if there's a high crime rate obviously you're gonna to want to be more physically capable where you're at. If you live in a place where there's a high population density and a high crime rate and you find yourself unfit or in one of the untrained categories that I just mentioned, then that might be something that you would want to consider looking into is training a bit more, having a bit more capable general fitness level. Hot versus cold climate. So in a cold climate, it's probably better to have excess fat stores, not to a point which is detrimental of your capability to hunt, but you're going to be burning more calories in the cold weather than you would in the warm weather. Similar to the high crime rate versus low crime rate is WROL versus rule of law or excessive rule of law. The other is defensive versus offensive. So if you're in a defensive disposition, it's probably better that you're of a bigger stature. Whereas people who are offending typically need to be smaller and more agile, faster, more capable. So these are all things to consider when trying to determine what is the ideal 
prepping physique. It really is tailored to the region that you're in. No matter which climate you find yourself in, you're going to adapt to that climate. Generally speaking, yes, the athletic physique is probably one of the most well-rounded or the untrained mesomorphic physique. Unfortunately, not everybody has an untrained mesomorphic physique. Many people are skinny by nature. Many people are fat or endomorphic by nature. So it's just the way it is. We have to do what we can with what we have. However, we can push the boundaries of all of those and try to optimize and tailor our body composition to our environments that we're in. So I hope this gave you some stuff to think about with regards to ideal body composition for the post-collapse environment. Let me know what your thoughts are below. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.